Welcome back to The Truth With Trinity, and I am your host, Trinity, and if this is your first time tuning into the podcast, I wanted to send you a warm welcome. Here, I talk about issues that happen within the Black community, not only to talk about them, but hopefully some type of resolution or at least some food for thought to go about your daily way. So without further ado, I'd like to jump into this episode's topic, which is, you do not have to be a thug to be a man. So... I'm going to make a small disclaimer. This does not apply to all black men or people, and this does not apply to all Caucasian people, but I cannot appease the small percentage to not get the message out. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to start off with history. And this is about the school systems and just the promotion of black men uh, being, you know, criminalistic. So I want to start off with the school system. So there's a history of them employing, uh, you know, Caucasian teachers into the urban black school system. Uh, some of that was because, you know, when we got out of slavery, um, you know, and because of the fact that, you know, black people were not allowed to attend college. There were more European or, you know, Caucasian uh, teachers. And, you know, when I say Caucasian, that does not just refer to Europeans, you know, Irish, anyone that can pretty much pass for white. So they employed, you know, white teachers so that they could control and which is a colonization tactic to make sure that their history or what they wanted us to learn about history, uh, the brainwashing, and make sure it was taking place in our school systems. And, you know, if you talk to a lot of our grandparents and older people in school, you know, they were telling the black children that they will serve as janitors, butlers, waitresses, cleaners, or criminals. So this is their lot in life. This is what they will grow up to become. They were vocalizing it. They were flat out telling them this in school. Meanwhile, the Caucasian teachers with their Caucasian children are telling them that the world is their oyster. So they can become whatever they want, wherever they want. And so this is the conditioning of the, you know, white supremacy in America. Um, So now in 2021, You know, they have, you know, a lot of Caucasian teachers in the urban areas that are teaching our children the same things, but dressed up in a different manner. So now it's athletics, it's athletes and entertainment and still the criminal aspect that they are subliminally teaching our children. And they do that by restricting certain education, outdated uh, education uh, you know, Caucasian teachers that could care less about teaching in the urban areas. They, you know, maybe couldn't get the job out in the suburban area. So they come to work, could care less, and are there to collect a check, basically. So I want to tie that into the black man. And I wanted to start off talking about the black man's oppression in this country. So you're talking about, you know, the black man being lynched, him being burned. You know, um, him being killed for trying to speak up for himself, let alone take up for himself. Um, Him, you know, having to watch his uh, child be killed. You know, sometimes um, Caucasian men would give them a choice. Either your child be killed or you be killed or both of you guys be killed. And, you know, to watch their women be raped and disrespected. So, you know, this is a whole, whole um, breeding ground, you know, for the black man to be angry because of his oppression and what has happened is is that the black man has turned his anger inward toward his own fellow brothers so he cannot you know exact his anger on who is doing the oppress oppression he's doing it to his own black brothers and i wanted to start off by talking about the colonization the digital the digital colonization So what I mean by digital colonization is, so these are tactics, these are methods. When you look at the form of colonization, it's a method, okay? And who are famously known for that are Caucasians, you know, but that could uh, refer to anyone 
who will try to take over someone else's uh, land, well-being, education, um, their culture, their language, their possessions, and to get them forcefully by killing, brainwashing to believe in something other than what they originally thought. Okay, so let's get back to the digital colonization. So they stripped the black man, you know, of being able to be employed, uh, you know, black women having to, you know, rely on welfare, killing them. And so, you know, if you're not going to get employed, they, of course, thought of a new plan. You know, we're going to put drugs into the community. So let's talk about that. When you look at the early 90s and you look at the late 80s and early 90s, you see these movies pop up. Movies like New Jack City, where it's portrayed that there's a black man coming from the hood with nothing. He blows up off of selling drugs to his own people. And so he's got the money. He's got the women. You know, what a woman isn't attracted to success or money. So he's got everything that caucasians have in this country without having to do those acts and i wanted to talk about that because the thing is they put those drugs into the community to get the black man addicted addicted to a certain lifestyle so they knew exactly who was selling the drugs you know they have their eyes everywhere so this was to get the black man addicted to a certain way of living. So he couldn't get it necessarily through getting a college education. Uh, the barriers are pretty high. Not to say he couldn't, but, you know, there's only a certain amount of slots for black people to succeed in this country. And so they got him addicted to this money, this lifestyle, which induced generational uh, addiction to selling drugs. So they got him addicted to the money. Okay, so then... If you notice now, there's no money in the dope game. And there's a reason because of that. So once they got the black man addicted to selling these drugs and to do anything to get that money, whether it was killing his own brother, selling drugs to his own mother and his own community, they took the money from out of the community. And now it's a game of the black man just killing himself. So at first it was him making this money. Him getting all this money that he would have never gotten on a nine to five job. And then, you know, so it's like you could be your own boss. So then they're, you know, the sons, the black sons are seeing their fathers and uncles getting this big money. So that perpetuates generational poisoning of our black men selling drugs. And now in 2021, you see a lot of black men. You know, they're selling drugs. They don't have cars. They don't have clean clothes. A lot of them are struggling living from house to house. So what happened to that vision on New Jack City? So that was a smoke screen of brainwashing, mass brainwashing. And then you have on our videos, you have our brothers and sisters that are getting paid. Um, and that's what, I, you know, I'll do another video in detail, but about selling your soul. So it's more than just selling your soul that the celeb black celebrities are doing. Um, the God we serve, which is the God over Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, a lot of the rituals and practices that not just the celebrities, but black people are doing are continuing us to be cursed as a people. And what it is, is that they've given society or this country has given a few of them some breadcrumbs to say, hey, you don't have to live that poor life. You know, I'll give you millions of dollars to promote an image that's going to destroy your people. And unfortunately, some of them are, you know, so hungry, um, which, you know, that can't be judged. But, you know, some of them are so hungry that they'll sell that image of this uh, drug life, dope game life, um, you know, kill your own brother uh, just to make this money that halfway they don't even have even out there in Hollywood, you know, so they're owned, they're controlled um, as well. And what we have is, like I said, our black men killing each other. It's, it's a game of murder now. So they got you addicted by this certain amount of money. And then now they've removed the money. And now every step you learn, you take, excuse me, every step you take, now they're doing the arrest, you know, back in eighties with uh, Reagan 
and you know uh, what a lot of the politicians now it's a war on drugs so they put the drugs in the community to get you addicted um, to this type of money and to of course drain the black community but now they've got it to where oh now you can be arrested so this is a whole colonization trick so now it's like a a, a mouse trap so now we've got you know your grandfather your father your uncles are selling these drugs so now we're going to arrest you you know now you've got a felony so now you're trapped so there's already a ceiling cap for blacks in this country to a certain degree so now there's even a lower ceiling once you get those felonies okay and we can argue that there are plenty of white guys that sell drugs um you know there are plenty of organized gangs with white people but the key is the white man and woman you know they're dying their numbers are diminishing so for every time that they're dying they're not repopulating the earth as quickly as they're dying and when you look at the history of, you know, Caucasians, when you study back in Great Britain, you know, they don't really want equality. Because when you look back at the history of Britain, there can only be one ruler. So they would rather die and kill everyone else within um, before anyone else before. So it's not that anyone like with black people, you know, it's not that, you know, we want to take over. Um, we just want equality. And I truly believe that's just something that I'm not going to say all Caucasians, but they really cannot deal with um, them just being like everybody else, you know. Um, but um, not to go away from my point, um, my point is, um, so it leads black men to the slaughterhouse as far as them selling drugs. Okay, so, you know, then black women are without their, uh, the men in their life. Okay, and you know, they're getting warehoused in these jailhouses. And so, you know, the black man comes out and, you know, that's part of the reason why the cops are allowed. So you have to get on the reality of they're allowed. So once you realize the truth, then you need to act accordingly. So this is no mistake while why the cops are getting off and they happen to be Anglo-Saxon. It's because it's the preservation of their race. Okay, it's the preservation. So they know that their numbers are diminishing. You don't think that they're going to try to diminish your numbers? So along with abortions, black women getting abortions and, you know, black men out there killing themselves within the communities, black cops have been assigned. You know, they won't tell us this, but they've been assigned to kill you um, because it's going to diminish the black man from um, being on earth. And to be able to repopulate the earth. Um, so naturally, they're not able to replenish the earth. But they're going to make it to where, with our own ignorance, um, that we're not able to populate the earth. And so, I, I basically want to send a message to the young black male in this country. That you must stop killing yourself. And the same forgiveness that they teach us to forgive them. When they murder you, you need to give that same forgiveness to your brother on the street. You're all you have in this country. You know, they paint an image that, you know, if they kill you, that you need to forgive them. But if you were to do the same to them, even by accident, there is no forgiving. So that lets you know that that's just a manipulation tactic to keep you being killed without making any further changes that need to be met. And so I'm asking and encouraging the black man to forgive his brother. So if he killed someone that you loved or someone that you were cool with, you know, you need to forgive him, you know, because the gun is truly on you in this country. And I encourage you to stop selling drugs and to find a better way to live because it's only a game for your life. They have pretty much removed the money from, you know, you being able to, you know, uh, make a, a profit without them making a profit off of you. And that's called a serial number in prison. Okay, for you to do cheap labor in prison. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'd like to say on this matter. Um, that's pretty much it. And it's been a pleasure talking with you all. And if you would like to get in contact with me, 
you can at thetruthwithtrinity.com. You can also listen to me on YouTube, Spotify, uh, pretty much Anchor. And always remember, if you can't tell the truth with anyone else, you can with Trinity. Till next time, take care.